This is Twit. Hey folks, Ant Pruitt here, twit.tv, CES 2020, and I have the honor and pleasure to hang out with the folks with human eyes to talk about some very, very interesting cameras. No, I'm not talking about that hot shot mirrorless camera that you got for Christmas holidays or anything like that. We're going beyond that. We're going to be talking about VR 360, 180, the whole shebang, all <laughs> kinds of little goodies right here on this here table. And um, my man, Mr. Jim, is going to tell me all about it and let me know what, they're, what they've been working on. You've seen me on my Instagram and YouTube. I've shot some footage using one of their cameras and it's pretty daggum cool, but I'm pretty sure I don't do it any justice because, you know, this is the man right here. So <laughs> what's going on with you? How you doing today? Hey, great to be here. I appreciate you taking time out of the busy schedule here in lovely CES. Sure, sure, sure. It's, uh, we know that there's a ton going on. and Really? At CES? <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The good news is, is that what Humanize is doing is creating ways for you to capture more of it, right. to record what's going on around you, and really some of the innovation we have for the show is giving the user ways to kind of create stories or build their stories from all of that content they create. Yep. And so, you know, really based on that, Views XR, which mm -hmm. is our most uh, recent 360 degree VR camera, mm -hmm. which I'll dig into here a little bit more in a minute. Um, we have a new announcement, which is a white version of it, uh, which seems Oh, that's seems pretty. Good. Yeah, well, the right? zebra version. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when it's closed, it looked like this. A little zebra version. Um, right. And both the cameras, the little zebra, I like that, actually. <laughs> I can see our next ad campaign with a little zebra in it. Um, but when it's closed, we get that full 360, so right. you're recording up to 5.7K resolution in right. a full 360 degrees. So you have enough data there to do some amazing things with after the fact, mm -hmm. and we'll talk about that a little bit here in a minute. Uh, but of course, you can push the little button on the back and outgo those lenses. Right. And so when those lenses open up, we'll do it this way so your viewers can see that open up. Um, you actually have a left and a right eye, just like we have the human eyes, left and a right eye. Right. VR headsets, if you look at the back of VR headset, there's two lenses in there, right. one for your left eye, one for your right eye. Mm -hmm. So when you record with a camera like this and play it back in a VR headset, it's basically reproducing what the human eyes see, right. including the 3D, so you get scale and depth and all of those things that you get uh, when you're actually looking at something in real life. Right. It's pretty nice. I, I, I've had fun just shooting different things with it and trying to figure out you know what would be an ideal use case with it as a, a content creator and I've used it for a vlog I've used it for just a demo and, and it's I've seen some other people try to get a little more creative than I have and it's it's interesting to see where this is going to go you know today forward and so forth yeah so let me give you three kind of primary use cases which will kind of set up some of the new news that we have here for CES mm -hmm. since this camera's already opened up we'll use the the VR component of it for a second. Right. Of course, it's very easy to go around and record environments in 3D. You're going to go to the zoo with your kids. You're going to do a birthday party, something right. like this. Now, typically when you shoot in VR 3D, you don't necessarily want to walk around with the camera. No. And the reason being is if you have a VR headset on and you start moving a camera around, you can make that viewer feel really sick. Yeah. Really quick. I was going to say, people right? are going to get quite ill with me. That's right. <laughs> so it's best... It, it's good practice. I wouldn't say it's best because you know it's always a creative decision. Mm -hmm. But in my world, what I tend to do is put the camera in a stationary position, and it's basically like sitting down with somebody. And so that use case of not only recording an environment, or let's say I want to do a cooking show, mm -hmm. right? Instead of having three different camera positions where I have a camera over at the sink and a camera in my prep area and a camera looking at uh, the oven or the stove, right. right? What I can do is set one camera which has 180 degree field of view. So in other words, I'm recording this entire environment. And then I can simply ask the viewer when they're in a VR headset, mm -hmm. hey, follow me over here to the sink. And then I can do the prep at the sink and wash the hands or whatever. And then go in and do the main stuff right, right in front of them so they're looking forward comfortably. Right. If I want to do a close up, mm -hmm. I don't need to move the camera. All I need to do is slide whatever it is that I'm cooking towards them. Right. And in VR, all I do is look down, and now I've got a close-up of what it is that I'm looking at. Isn't that Go to cool? put it in the oven or the stove, I can simply look over in this other direction. So 
from a very practical VR 180 perspective, there's tons of tools around storytelling. You don't have to tell a movie or create a movie right. to tell your story. You can immediately use it to kind of augment your your video that you're doing for traditional vlog or any other video you're doing. Right. The last piece I'll say on that one, which is kind of easy, is you can then output, choose one of the lenses. And if I just want to make a 2D video for Instagram, for example, mm -hmm. something that you can't interact with, I can actually script out with something we call director's cut, which is also reframing. Right. And I can make an HD video from parts of that full 180 degree field of view. Mm -hmm. And I'll demo some, demo some of that here in a second. Yeah, I, I remember seeing that software update and it, it was quite exciting to see that capability built in. That was great. <laughs> so that's usage number one. Usage number two is that full 360, right? When it's closed like this. Right. The advantage to shooting in full 360 is you don't have to frame the shot. I don't have to say, oh, I want to look at this or I want to look at that mm -hmm. because it's recording video or photos of everything all the time. Then after the fact, I can either view that back on my computer and simply use my mouse and drag around on the screen right. and look at whatever I want to look at, or I can do what's referred to as reframing. We call that director's cut in our software, mm -hmm. uh, which allows you to create a square video, a vertical video, whatever it is that you want to, mm -hmm. to post to social media. Up until now, mm -hmm. You were limited, and I hate using the word limited, but you would record a 4K video, transfer that 4K video to your mobile phone, and then you would do your editing on your mobile phone in 4K or from that 4K file. Right. The disadvantage to that was that we were leaving 1.7K of data on the table because the camera shoots in up to 5.7K of resolution. Right, that's a lot of pixels. It's a lot of <laughs> pixels, and when you're doing this reframing technique, you want to be able to address that. Right. So now, we're really excited to announce the Humanize Cloud 1.0. Now, it is a beta software that we are going to go live with at the end of January, so okay. about a month from now, so okay. not, not too far away. Uh, I'll give you a sneak peek of it today. Okay. In short, what it allows you to do is shoot full resolution video on your camera. Use either your mobile phone or your computer. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about the mobile phone for a second. Where I would just go in and I would choose a video. So I would connect my phone, my phone, All right. <laughs> to my camera using Wi-Fi. I will choose a video and push upload to cloud and it will take the data from the camera and push it up to the cloud. Okay. Okay. Once that data is up in the cloud, I can view the videos and I can work with them on my phone. But because the data is actually in the cloud, I'm really only working on what's called a proxy or a very small resolution file mm -hmm. that I can see everything in my video that I want to work with, but I don't overburden my phone. In fact, I'll just reset this here for a second. Right. Um, I don't overburden my phone with all of this data that right. I've transferred over, which is going to kill my battery life and hurt the performance and timing that it takes to do things like stitching. Now, see, that's pretty neat because that's similar to how um, people that are editing just standard, you know, UHD 4K footage in their NLEs, they typically like to offload some of that data to a proxy file and it allows you to skim through and speed through and, and reframe stuff a lot easier and it's not making your computer choke and wish you'd leave it alone, you know? But <laughs> exactly. that, so that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. It, it, it's, it is a easy way to help overcome, you know, one of the biggest hurdles right mm -hmm. now that 360 is suffering from, which is people don't necessarily know what to do with all of that picture data. Mm -hmm. Right, and if you're used to shooting HD, right, so 1920 by 1080, those files are manageable and fairly small in the scope of things. You can edit them very easily on your computer. You go up to 4K data, mm -hmm. right, um, even cinematic 4K, 3840 by 1920, I think it is, if I get my, my numbers right. Um, a little more than that. That's is, close is, enough. Well, for, so you can do 40 <laughs> cinematic 4K is like 4096 by mm -hmm. anyway. So whatever the numbers are, um, that file has got a lot of data in it, and even something like a 
decent computer can still start to choke on that right. a little bit from an editing prospect because if you think about it, that's like a seven megapixel image every, well, 30 of them every second. Every second, yeah. Right, so, you know, people think, oh, it's just video, but really video is nothing more than a bunch of still bunch images, of stills. That's right? That's correct. So when you get to 5.7K, it's 16 megapixels, mm. right, at 30 frames per second. Lots and of data. every one of those is a photo, right? Lots of data. It's a lot of data. So it's about one gigabyte of data for every one minute of recording. <laughs> okay? So the advantage to having all of that data is you can do some really amazing things after the fact. Right. Right? The downfall is, is it can overburden a computer or certainly overburden your mobile phone. Mm -hmm. So at Humanize, we've developed the Humanize Cloud. Like I was saying, you're just going to push the data up to the cloud. If you don't want to use your mobile phone and mm -hmm. your data to do that, you can simply connect your computer via, um, you connect the camera to your computer via USB. Okay. The camera's got a USB-C slot on it. All right. And you choose the upload icon here, um, which I think this screen is in the back. I'm not sure how well people can see it, but there's a little upload button, and you'll simply push that upload button, and it'll allow you to select the videos that you want and you just push them up through the cloud using you know, your Wi-Fi signal or even a, a cabled connection that's connected right. to your computer. Right. Okay. Then, once everything's in the computer, we're gonna send a proxy down to your device. So this is a low resolution version of that big file that I pushed up to the cloud. And from that, I can do just about anything that I can do with our regular software. Um, let's go ahead and do something that we call reframing, or in our case, director's cut. Mm -hmm. And just for fun, we'll make, we'll crop this, and I'm going to turn this video into a vertical video, All right? So that I can put it into an Instagram story. Of course. Right. So this is not something that I could interact with, but it's something that I can view in stories. So I'm going to start with that as a vertical, and then I'm going to simply say set that as my start point, and hit the little check. Now I've said that's the position I'm going to start my video at. Right. A little keyframe. Exactly what it is. So I'm going to hit play on my video, and I'm going to actually drag around to the other side of the room. And when I get to the other side of the room, let's say I wanted to zoom in a bit on me, and I'm going to simply tell it here, look here. Right. So now I've put another keyframe in. I'm going to hit play again, and let's say I'm going to zoom out and just, just do a super, super wide angle of that field of view, uh -huh. and I'm gonna say, set that as my end point, okay. All right, so now I've basically crafted out a short little video. I can simply hit finish, whoops, I can hit finish. I can click on it and say, hey, I wanna make this into a 2D video. Right. I also have an option to make it into a 360 video that will have camera movement, right. but not the zoom, but, right, so it's not gonna be framed, but I could go out to a full 360, or in this case, I do want to do that piece specific for Instagram, so I'm going to grab that, hit continue, and render in cloud. Okay. So it's taking your keyframes and applying it in the cloud, exactly. basically. Okay. So, yep. So basically what we did is, not to get overly technical, but I've got a proxy here. Right. I've said do A, B, and C. That A, B, and C is a very simple little text file. Right. We can very quickly push that up to the internet, and in the cloud, if I go to this thing called Process Manager on my tab here, it's now queued and it's getting ready to render. Okay. All right. So it has sent that instruction set up. The cloud is starting to do whatever work I told it to do to uh, to it, and it's going to go ahead and render that out for me. Now, since this is in the cloud, I presume the processing power is going to be way better than our phones and, and laptops or whatever. So exactly, it's going to be pretty quick to push them up there and, and pull them right back down. You guys are doing all of the, the heavy lifting. That's right. We okay. do all the heavy lifting. If you think about the CPU or the computer that's in your mobile phone that runs on a little slim battery in there, mm -hmm. right? There's only so much power in that. Right. But you rightly point out, once we go up to the cloud, we have an endless supply uh, access to not just storage, which a lot of people think of the cloud as storage. Right. But more importantly, what we can do in the cloud is actually apply computing technology. And this is what's referred to as edge computing. Mm -hmm. And if we look forward a few years from now, when something called 5G comes, there's some confusion right now in the industry, the telecom industry, because they call something 5G that, quite frankly, isn't really <laughs> 5G. 
Um, but when f true 5G comes, right. not only will we be able to push that data to the cloud, we'll be able to move a computing system to the node or the site that you're actually connected to with your cell phone, right. and we'll be able to stitch it in real time and have a very short what's called latency. In other words, a very short conversation back and forth. The short right. meaning like... A couple of six, milliseconds. Yeah, well, the, the short <laughs> instruction is a couple of two or three milliseconds, mm -hmm. and a full rendered piece like 60 to 70 milliseconds. That's still pretty fast. It's very <laughs> fast. So it's fast enough to do things like video conferencing and all that kind of stuff. Right. We're not there yet because 5G is still... 2023 2024 before it's widely distributed right so hopefully your 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 viewers aren't too confused with the mess that's happening right now with well, the, all the of these twit, 5g claims the twit audience they trust me those guys they know all about the infrastructure behind 5g and back all the way to edge and everything so yeah they know <laughs> <Excellent>. <laughs> so what i'm gonna do now is um i had this thing in process manager and while we were talking it actually says now data no data is available what that means is I don't have anything queued right now that I'm working on. So okay. it's already rendered that video. So I'm going to go up here to my media library. And I've done a lot of samples in here, but this is the video that I just scripted out. We'll see here that it is a vertical format. I'm going to go ahead and make it a little bit larger. So maybe this will show up on your camera. Right? So we've cropped out mm -hmm. using Director's Cut, the vertical. Right. And we have created this story, this little pan that we did here and then uh, zoom out. Now the resolution that you're watching right now is a lower resolution just to kind of stream it out. Right. But if I come back in here and I share it, for example, I'm gonna hit share, and I wanna share that over to Facebook, mm -hmm. I hit share, what we'll do is we're gonna basically sideload that product or that video from the Humanized Cloud into Facebook. Right. And that way, um, your viewers on Facebook will be able to interact with it. Unfortunately, it looks like we are beta. We're not seeing that vertical format there, mm -hmm. so <laughs> right. bear with us on that kind of stuff. Um, but then I would just simply hit post to Facebook, right. and it'll go into the Facebook feed, and I'm done. Very, very simple. In fact, we can see if we show up in Facebook. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't show up with anything funky in here. <laughs> I'm not saying this is dangerous, but you never well, know. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> there's a year ago I was doing some of this stuff. Right, here's the video here that is. we created. There we go. That was quick. So now that's getting it up to say social media, or whatever you choose. Now, what about just getting it back to your device? So unfortunately, today I don't have the demo on there mm -hmm. uh, in, in the current app, but mm -hmm. there's a download feature where you'll simply download from the device. Okay. Back down to your device. So like we have here, we see share in the menu today. Right. We'll have a download option and you'll be able to download different options. Now this particular video is 1080 by 1920. Right. Because it's a six it's by nine, or nine by 16 nine by, by nine, 16. nine by 16. So it's the mm -hmm. opposite way, right? Because it's vertical. Mm -hmm. um, so in this option here, it only shows 19 by 20 resolution. Mm -hmm. However, if I go back to the master file, which I pushed up, which started at 5 by 5.7K, uh, mm -hmm. these are the vertical okay. dimensions. I could output it as a 2880, which is the 57, 5720 by 2880, mm -hmm. or 1920, or 960. So I could download multiple resolutions. Nice. Like that. Okay. okay. Well, that's good. Yeah. So I can sideload it to social media. I can download my files back to my resin. So if I wanted to, for example, stitch... Um, using Premiere Pro mm -hmm. or you know some other software, I can make my videos, pull them down. I could use my clip as B-roll uh, in an existing movie, or I could create an entirely new movie all from the camera. You have to think of it as if you're not going to use it as a as your primary camera, think of it as a secondary camera to get some what we like to call impossible shots or difficult shots. Right. Well, you're not going to be able to ahead of time either figure out where the action is going to be effectively or you can't put somebody into a certain space. I talked to a guy the other day who uh, uses a very long selfie stick. In fact, I have a, I have a nine foot selfie stick, but <laughs> he did the same type of thing and he shoves it inside. Did you just say a nine foot selfie stick, Jim? I did. <laughs> but do you know why I have a nine foot selfie stick? Let me show you. Because you're actually, special. That's right. <laughs> well, here's the thing. If you go to New York City, right? Okay, 
Um, selfie sticks, well, I shouldn't say selfie sticks, wrong word. Um, drones are banned in New York City. Right. You cannot fly a drone in New York City. Right. Okay? However, this video here um, starts out, and then I've got this great drone shot. Oh. Flies back. <laughs> Right? Now this video hasn't been stabilized or whatever. That's creative. Okay. okay. But by taking the camera and putting it on the end of a long selfie stick, right. you put it close to your subject, right? And then you walk back, and as you walk back, you work on bringing it up, and that gives you the altitude of the camera itself. And then when you do your reframing, right. you'll start with your 16 by 9 fairly zoomed in. But then, while you're walking back, you also zoom out. Right. So then, not only do you, does it look like you're getting further away, but it also looks like it's getting higher. Good bit so of a parallax. That's you can, pretty cool. You can start to fake a drone shot. Um, one more example to having a nice long selfie stick. Uh, I was in the Shelby Museum down here in Vegas. Mm. And the way they have it set up, it's hard to see inside the vehicles and everything. So take the selfie stick, and you can actually stick it out over the top of the cars. Now, I was with a buddy of mine, and he's looking at me going, if you drop that on that multi-million dollar Shelby car there, like, I'm not going to stick around that I show you. So you have to be responsible, of course. Of course. Um, but it really gives you, quite frankly, impossible camera shots. Right. That you, otherwise, they, you can't get beyond the velvet rope. All right. And so far, they're not yelling at people for, at least they didn't yell at me at all, for reaching over and actually getting that shot. Um, you don't know, also, go back and try that again. Please don't. <laughs> <laughs> like, I also dropped it between a couple of cars. Right. You know, down in between, and then you get these great shots, and you can look at the side of one and the other, and you can... It's, you know, if, you, if you can open your mind up to the fact that once you capture everything, mm. you can create anything. Right. Then the creative tool really is super powerful. The limitation until now has been the mobile phone because there's not enough processing power. Mm -hmm. People don't always want to carry their computer around with right. them. And even if they do... Unless you know, you're a weirdo do, like me. Yeah, a lot of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the cloud gives you that flexibility to really empower the creation and then just pull those videos into whatever story you're telling, or quite frankly, you don't even have to pull them into anything. Right. You can sideload that right into your existing social media, and off you go. Now, the software that you just showed on the phone, that's great, but what about the package that you offer for your Windows or Mac? Yep. So let's jump over to that. Now, unfortunately, this particular computer, this one over here does, but this one that I'm using right now does not have the cloud link to it, mm -hmm. but the same tech process that I showed here where you edit a proxy right. and then send the instructions to the cloud nice. also exists in this software, which is um, the Views VR Studio software. So this is your desktop software for Mac and PC. Mm -hmm. Incredibly powerful. Um, let me just find uh, a video here real quick. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure what some of these are, so we'll just grab. <laughs> be careful. Careful. <laughs> you never know. So let's just grab this one here. So I'm just going to drag it over here. All right. The video that's up there right now is a VR 180. Oh gosh, I'm in it. Okay. <laughs> a star, I am not. Um, but anyway, once I pull a, a video in, I can hide this uh, navigation window from my media browser right. just by clicking on like this little green window, and now it's full screen. Uh, if I want to take a look at the video, I can put it up as a 360 and I can zoom around. Oh, my. Okay. <laughs> Careful what you're looking at. You're 39. Yeah. There you go. And now I have a lot of movement in this camera because, again, this is another one of those selfie stick cameras where I'm moving it all around. Uh -huh. So I basically, have, it's like a drone shot is what I was creating right. here. This right. has not been stabilized, right? So this is just the raw video. So what I would do is let's go back to this drone shot here for a second. Um, first thing I want to do is go into stabilization and I'm going to change this and I'm going to stabilize for the horizon and stabilize. So this right. way it flattens my horizon. Right. Because I, the thing that people struggle with with cameras is we're so used to pointing a lens at something, but you don't have to. I can hold the camera like this and I can still get a video of you. Nice. So this correct horizon because feature, it's got the curvature. Exactly. Gotcha. I can fix the horizon. 
So my horizon is nice and flat. I can zoom around. There's me with, this is not my nine foot selfie stick. This happens to be a five foot one, but anyway. Um, and I can come back here and just choose where I want to start my video. I can hit the letter I as an in mark. Let's go back here just a little bit further to the sign. There we go. Let's say I'm going to start here. I can hit I as an in mark, and I got a little marker down there now on my timeline. Uh -huh. There's the video. It's playing back a little bit slow right now because this is a full 5.7K. Right. And Lots of data again. Yep. Um, and then I could go down here to whatever I want my end point to be, and I can hit E for end, and then I can go back and render it. I can take a look at the full 360 version of that or just what I want to render out. Um, I can flip my video if I have my camera mounted upside down or something and I just right. want to flip my video. Um, you can do what's called uh, a patch image. So if I did use a tripod, I want to hide the tripod or quite frankly, I wanted to hide me. Right, <laughs> I, I could put right. A, what we call a patch in there, which is a little logo that you can put your company name or something like that in there. Um, and then um, I could put in different uh, keyframes and basically do everything that we just talked about from the other on the desktop. So now we've, we've been able to run this thing through and even output it to potentially ProRes 422. Yep. Get beautiful footage. What's the, what's the next step? What, what, what is next for the, the um, content creator? They're going to put this on social media. They're going to put this in some type of video for YouTube or what have you, just regardless of the platform, it's ready to go. That's what you're saying? It's ready to go. Yeah, once you output it out, you've got that H.264. Now, we do have one more trick up our sleeve. Mm -hmm. If you're doing both video and still images, now what I'm going to show you today is based on still images. Okay. But I want you to kind of keep an open mind on how you can use the technology. Right. Uh, so in parallel to what we're doing with the cloud computing capability, we are also opening up um, something that we refer to as our virtual tour creator. Okay. Now, virtual tour is very relevant to the realty market or real estate market or Airbnb or, you know, things like this, very relevant. You do want to work on branding this a little bit and changing the name a little bit because it doesn't have to be a virtual tour of a property, right? I could do a virtual visit. I could do, you know, I could take you to the zoo and you could go look at zebras versus giraffes versus right. whatever, right? Right. Um, I can really take anywhere. It could be my vacation. It could be, you know, a bachelor party, bachelorette this, party, whatever. This is a come with me exactly. kind of thing. Come with me. I like that. Yeah. So You can have that. Yeah. <laughs> you say that now. You can have it. But later on. <laughs> um, so come with me to one that I did here at the Encore. So I'm going to just sit here and hit edit. And this brings you into the editor that you can use to create VR, or not VR, but virtual tours. Okay. Right? So this is something you're going to be able to view on your mobile phone. In fact, you can create these on your mobile phone as well, because again, it's all done up in the cloud. Oh, right. So okay. in this case, here's a, an image that was captured with the camera. Uh, the JPEGs were loaded up. In fact, I, in this case, uploaded several different JPEG images here of the suite that we're in. Okay. Um, and then I added these things called hotspots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit this hotspot, and I'm actually going to delete it here for a second. So now I don't have a hotspot on this side of the room. Okay. But let's say I know that I did shoot from that side of the room. I want to add a hotspot. So super easy to do. I'm going to just hit this hotspots button. I'll put a standard one in there, choose what shape I want it to be, and then I decide where I want the hotspot to be. And let's make it a little bit smaller because I want it to make it look like it's further away. Okay. So we'll put that there. And then I just have to tell what target I want it to go, and that will be the Encore second view. That's what I called that picture that I took from that spot. Right. And now if I go to live mode and I click on that spot, the camera moves me to that position, or the system moves oh, me to that position. Oh, nice. Right? So over here, the dining area, so I can go to the dining room area, and I can view the suite from there. I could go to the bar area. Oh, Jim. Right? <laughs> go in, I know, right? This lets me get into the bedroom. I got a different icon Wait in here. Minute. We have some little <laughs> colorful icons. I don't actually have one for the bedroom. Right. Um, in fact, if I just pick on this one here for a second, whoops, let me come out of that for a second. Um, go back to this view. 
if I'm looking in here, I'm going to come out of the live view and click on this. There's a whole bunch of um, little icons that you can add as hotspots. And you just choose them out of here if you want to put, you know, for the bar, I could have used the martini. Right. right. There wasn't one for a bedroom, so I grabbed this one of a hammock hanging between. <laughs> and then I can just position in there, and I just have to tell it what the donation, the destination is, and we'll call right. it the main bedroom. And we're done. So now when I go back in live. Now, the real magic to this is how in the world are you going to share it, right? Because now I've taken you to the zoo. I've had you come with me, right? right? And I want to be able to share that. So super, super easy to do. I'm just going to come out of live mode here for a minute. I'm back in the main edit. I'm going to save any changes that we did. And it's going to say it's saved and ready for publish. And then I hit share. And from share, I now have a link. And I can simply copy and paste this link right. and send it to wherever I want to send it. Um, I can open it here directly. I can go directly to Facebook. Or I can take this QR code. And with the iPhone, and I'm sorry, I don't know enough about Android, but iPhone has now added a feature that within the regular camera feature, mm -hmm. I don't have to take a QR code reader or anything like that. Just within the camera, if you put it in here and put it in front of the QR code, it's going to come up with the link. Right. And it will automatically link you into it. So in the past, you had to download something like uh, Red Laser or whatever, some third-party app something in order to do a QR to code. But now the scans happen easily. Um, okay. Wanted me to go in here and use the Internet. I don't want to use the Internet. There we go. <laughs> so it comes up, and then I can navigate through here, and I can go do the tour. <laughs> I can go do the tour however I want to go, do the tour, move through all the rooms, all that type of stuff. That's really Super, cool. super easy to do. Um, very easy to, to create your own story. That's so really cool. this whole idea of come with me, this is real estate set up. In fact, here there are settings where I could actually upload a picture of a floor plan. I could put a map location, all the property information, all that type of stuff is in here. I do want to create some different templates so I could say vacation, um, family event, whatever, and then have different info that I could plug in there very easily. In fact, even upload a picture of the family or something like that yeah. uh, if it's a birthday party. So that now I've made this great little experience that I can very easily bring somebody into an immersive experience with immersive media to be able to experience what I experience Man. because I captured in 360. That, that's impressive. <laughs> I, I really, really like that um, because, again, it's not necessarily just doing a living room tour or whatever there's a lot of different use cases that you can use for just regular everyday people if you will absolutely um, and and originally we made this specifically for the real estate market which is why some of the mess or some of the fields are in there and stuff like that in the settings mm -hmm. but it became very quickly and, and obvious that for people to really take advantage of 360 right um, to be able to find a really easy way to share those and tie those experiences together. So even if you're not a pro editor or whatever, you can create an experience yes. for your for your family, friends, viewers, guests, whatever it is. And that was just clicks. It's super quick. E easy <laughs> clicks. And like I said, you can do it on your mobile phone while you're in the field. You can do it on a desktop. Um, and you can put in text. You can do, you know, again... Be creative, yes. make your things, and I look forward to seeing what people will create beyond just real estate uh, Man, content. That's 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 awesome, Jim. This this has been a great overview. Now, release. I know you said the software is going to be ready roughly end of January this year, right? Yep, yep. So in about thirty days, we're going to release the beta version. Okay. Uh, we're already creating a queue of people to join the program itself. Okay. So if you go to humanize.com. Um, very simple website. Mm -hmm. um, it's actually, some people think when I say humanize, I mean like I Z E, like I'm gonna right. humanize, you know, humanize like <laughs> humanize. the eyeballs, right? So we think about humanize as a company. We're about virtual reality and creating VR content. So think about your your human eyes. Right. Um, but anyway, humanize.com. You'll come to a website. Um, there's two options there. You can learn about VR cameras, or you can learn about the cloud solution. Just click on the cloud solutions tab. It'll actually bring you to a registration window that Put your name in, email address, click that you'd like to get notifications. We will send you progress updates between now and the end of the month. And then once we go live, you'll be able to sign up, get your account, get your credentials, 
put in your passwords. Um, we, ha we, do, we have built in a lot of security on the back end because these are people's memories. They're their videos. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, you do want to make sure you get a nice secure password and all that type of stuff. And then your account will be secure. Um, and off you go. You can start creating immediately. That's awesome. Now, with these these cameras, the the Vuz, I can never say this name properly. Vuz <laughs> XR. Yep. I know these are already available, but this this new Zebra one, <laughs> that's that's ready to go too. That's available. Yeah, we just started shipping, so that's up on the website now, as well as uh, some of our retailers like uh, Adorama or Beach Camera also have inventory. Um, so you can order those online, uh, Amazon.com as well. Three hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Okay. Get you into the Views XR, uh, either color. It's entirely up to you, and that's all you need to do to get started. And get yourself a nine-foot selfie stick. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> we do have we do have a reasonable three-foot one as well, which uh, we call a magic selfie stick because right. it magically disappears right. behind the, the the camera itself. Um, but if you really want to push the bound, I mean, it's up to you, right? Like. Some people are crazy, some people are not. I happen to fall a bit some more on the crazy gym. side. Yeah. <laughs> and you want to just reach reach in and get shots that other people can't or haven't been able to get and get some really unique angles. Yeah. Um, and because I don't have to be in there trying to decide how to frame my shot, right. I can just put the camera into a position and I can make those uh, composition and positioning decisions later on. Heck, why not? Give right. it a try. That's awesome. That's awesome. Mr. Jim, thank you so much <laughs> for your time. This has been great. CES 2020, human eyes, Vuz XR, being able to tell even more fascinating stories with your video and now even with your photographs. This is pretty awesome. Thanks for checking in, folks. We'll catch you later.